If you're dealing with spasticity or muscle tightness of the hand that's making it difficult for you to open your fist, you're in the right place. We're gonna go through two sets of five stretches and exercises to help improve those tight hand muscles. Now these exercises are gonna be best for someone who has a little bit of movement and does not have a hard contracture where their muscles are completely tight. And if you want to learn more about other strategies that you can use to open a clenched fist, I recommend you check out this video that I made a while ago. Now let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna start with a gentle warm up of wrist extension. So what I'm gonna have you do is, if your hand is kind of curled up like this, often we see wrist flexion or a bent wrist when you have hand spasticity. All I want you to do is take your unaffected hand and gently press that wrist back. You don't have to get it all the way back, but I just want you to try to get it out of that um, flexed position just a bit. Of course, with any of my exercises, any of the workouts that you do, if you feel pain, please stop, back off. We do not wanna cause another injury. So, we're just holding here for a few seconds. It is important to note that Exercising and stretching alone, it's good to help maintain um, and manage tightness, but it may not be enough by itself. So it could be worth reaching out and talking to your doctor about specific hand splints, medications, or injections that might be helpful for you in conjunction with exercising and stretching. So let's go ahead and move into our first exercise, which is a thumb abduction stretch. So this is where we're going to try to get that thumb out and away from a clenched fist, those curled fingers. You're gonna try to use your unaffected hand, or if someone's helping you, they'll, they'll use their hand, to try to basically get up and under that curled thumb. You wanna make sure that you're supporting um, each of these um, joints here. And then all you're gonna do is try to gently pull that thumb away from the rest of the fist, the rest of the fingers, and you're just holding there. You'll notice I'm pulling away, not all of the joints are completely straight, and that's fine. Everyone's gonna be at a very different place. Um, so if you can't get all of your joints straight, that's fine. Let's relax here. We're gonna move into the next one, which is a gentle opener. So now that we've hopefully got that thumb a little bit away from those other fingers, the gentle opener is taking your affected hand, unaffected hand, sorry, and trying to gently slide it underneath your fingers, might be just one finger at a time, and gently trying to open up that space in between the fingers and the palm of your hand. So you're just gonna hold there for several seconds. Now you'll notice my wrist is bent back and that's just so I can show you on the camera. Your wrist may not look like this. Your wrist may wanna stay flexed forward. Um, but I just wanna do this so that you can see on the camera what I'm doing. All right, and with each of these, you're just holding you know, 10, 15, 30 seconds, whatever you can tolerate. Um, and whatever is not painful. Now what you're going to do here, if you need a break, you can take out your hand, but if you don't, we're transitioning into the next stretch. Woo, so you could leave your hand in there. We're transitioning to the next stretch, which is a progressive opener. So this means we're going to try to progressively open that hand to get those fingers open a little bit more. Again, you'll notice as I'm stretching, not all of those finger joints are getting completely straightened out, and that's okay. You know, the, the muscles in our hand, um, whether it's due to spasticity or just a higher muscle tone, you know, that, that can happen over time and it can get worse over time without constant stretching or daily stretching routines. Um, so you may be starting from a tighter spot if you haven't been doing those things, Again, that's okay. This is meant to meet a lot of people where they are. So everyone's coming to this video with you know a different experience and at a different place. Okay, now from this point, each of these is going to get more um, progressive, working towards an open hand. So what we are gonna try to do with this one is get a flat hand. So this is where you may try to 
get that hand all the way open using your unaffected hand, you'll notice it does look like there's still a bend. Sometimes people may sit like this. This may be as flat as you can get your hand. You may have to use your unaffected hand to gently hold your affected hand in place, and that's totally fine. So if you're not getting completely straight, this is as flat as you can get it, that's totally fine. Um, you may not, depending on where your wrist flexion is, be able to get it flat here. Um, but just do your best. Just do your best and work with what you have. Okay. Now, this next one, if this one is too much, I want you to try to go back to the flat hand or the progressive opener where you're just trying to get those fingers open. This one is for people who might have a little bit more active movement and active movement is very important to help control those tight muscles, but it is difficult. So let's say you're starting from a clenched fist or you're lifting up your hand after that flat hand exercise. What I want you to do is try your best to close that hand and then open it up. Now, closing your fist is probably gonna be a little bit easier than coming back to opening, right? The opening piece, those extensors, are likely a lot weaker because those flexors are what's, the ones that bend your fingers, bend your wrist, are what's being constantly contracted. So extending is likely gonna be harder, but I just want you to do your best. All right, guess what? We're back at the second set. So we're gonna go back into the thumb abduction stretch, pulling that thumb out and away. Now, if some of you start with that thumb tucked into your fingers, what you might try to do is get underneath, if you have any type of little opening here, gently supporting the thumb at all of the joints here and trying to pull it out and away. Now this may or may not be doable for you depending on how tight those fingers are, right? And how tightly they're holding onto the thumb. Sometimes it might be easier to do those openers and get the fingers open before you try to get the thumb uh, out and away from the fist. But again, everyone is just kind of at a different place. So find which way these exercises work best for you, these stretches work best for you, and go with that. You don't have to follow these exactly. This is just to help you get an idea of what you can do at home. All right, so now that we have that thumb stretched out, we're going back into our gentle opener. So this is where, remember, that we're trying to just get the unaffected hand, or if you're, you have a caregiver or you know a friend, a loved one who's helping you, they're gonna try to get their hand underneath your fingertips. Now, sometimes those ring fingers and pinky fingers wanna stay down. So if you can't get every single one all the way up, that's okay. Just do your best. I'm gonna turn so that you can see here. And you're just gonna hold here. Each of these is just kind of a progressive, prolonged stretch where we're holding for whatever you can tolerate, five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. And we're just holding so that we can help to relax those spastic or high muscle tone muscles in your hand and those that cross the wrist. Sometimes we need that slow, gentle stretch to help them relax, to help that spasticity relax. Quick stretching is gonna make spasticity worse. So it's important to do gentle and prolonged stretching. All right, we're going into the progressive opener. So this is where we're pulling those fingers out a little bit further. We're working on those middle joints and end joints here to try to get those as open as you can. So we've got your hand open a little bit more. You may need to have your hand on the side. You may be able to place it palm down, whatever is comfortable for you. Of course, depending on where your elbow tends to sit, right? You may be kind of like this doing the stretches but whichever way you're doing it, that's okay. Just remember, don't push through pain, any weird sensations, tingling, numbness. Make sure you stop and kind of recalibrate and make sure that you're doing everything safely. All right, we're moving into the next one, which is flat hand. So 
I'm gonna go in this position, but you all do whatever feels most comfortable for you. And this is where you might try to get all those fingers out and try to get them flat on a surface if you can. Um, so like I've mentioned before, you might notice, hey, yeah, Elise, you're, you're showing us, but your hand's not flat, right? You've got um, bends in a lot of those knuckles, those joints of the fingers. And you know what, that's okay, because that's probably what it's gonna look like in real life. You're likely not gonna just go to a flat hand. You're likely gonna have some level of bend in those small finger joints and those knuckles, but that's okay. Each step is a step towards the flat hand. So even if you don't have a flat hand today, it's something that you're gonna continuously work towards. Okay, now we've got that last big exercise, which is the active open. So that's where we're trying to open the hand and then close it. So this will just look like trying to push it out and then bring it into a fist. Same rules apply here. If you cannot get your hand actively all the way open, that's fine. That's not what we're looking for. We're not looking for perfection. We're just looking for movement, right? So you may need to rest your hand depending on um, the fatigue level, the um, spasticity or high muscle tone that you do have throughout your arm. Um, I mentioned this last time, but it's likely going to be easier to bring that hand back into a fist because those, those flexors are stronger, they're contracted more with that spasticity than the extensors are. Those extensors are likely weak. So even if you can just get this tiny bit of movement, that's active hand opening, okay? Even if you're not getting any active movement at all, I want you to keep trying because that, the act of trying, the act of trying to open your hand is what is helping to retrain your brain to remake those neural pathways. But I want you to go ahead and stop here. We are done for today. We're done with our stretches and our exercises. I hope that you found this exercise routine helpful. And again, make sure you check out that other video for a little bit more information on other strategies to open a clenched fist. Link will be in the description below. And as always, I'm gonna be leaving a link down in the description if you'd like to sign up for the email list, which gets you free stroke re recovery tips and motivational emails every week, as well as a free copy of my ebook, The Stroke Recovery Pocket Guide. And if you find value in what we do here at Post Stroke, please consider donating. You can do that by either giving us a super thanks in the YouTube bar below, you can give us a one-time donation via PayPal, or you can become a Patreon member where in exchange for a monthly donation, you get access to cool perks like social media shout outs, behind the scenes footage, um, you can even get Q&A monthly videos, all sorts of fun stuff, as well as YouTube shout outs at our empower level of which I have one today. Thank you so much to Doug C for continuing to contribute at our empower level. We can't do what we do without you. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.